Okay, so I'm going to talk about feeling the feelings in the context of feeling rejected, um, feeling rejected, abandoned, uh, maybe it feels like a reaction to someone abandoning you. And maybe even after that disappointment, some anger coming up and experience. How do you feel that out? You know, how, how do you do the Hawkins, how do you do the Hawkins letting go process on that? Well, um, just checking. Uh, yep, yep. So, okay, so feeling feelings. One thing is to know, like, let's say someone, I feel rejected by someone's actions or words, or that they're not you know, they're not giving me their presence. They seem to be distracting away, for example. And I feel, and the first thing to know, to feel the feelings, um, rejection and bitterness or anything that's a label or a description of something is not a feeling. That is a, a program, it's a belief system. Disappointment uh, or, or rejection are not, th th these are the belief systems. Um, like, uh, if you anger is, is a feeling, but, uh, when you, when you, as soon as you put a program on it, it takes on form. So a feeling is actually, uh, it's a bit like a cloud. If, if a cloud, a cloud is like more like a feeling, it, it's not got, it's not very tight, like anger or shame. Now, as soon as you put, I'm shameful because or I feel abandoned because, or this thing in the world happened and I am disappointed with what happened in the world. Those are now, it's not just a feeling uh, or an energy that, that one is experiencing, but it is actually a mental description on, on something. So in doing the feeling the feelings, you must let go First thing to do in purely feeling out the feelings because is um, to let go of anything that might be a description or a label or a program. Like, I feel angry at you is not feeling anger. It's actually, there might be some anger in the background, but it's actually me and my thinking or trying to make a story about the feeling of anger. So to feel the feelings because the more time I'm, I'm making labels and stories in my head while trying to do the feelings, it, it creates what's called resistance. So it takes longer to feel the feeling out because I'm in my head or I'm, make, or I'm not, or I, unconsciously I could be in my head or the unconscious is involved in it. It's saying, oh, this is, this is abandonment. This is disappointment. How could they have done this to me? So really the unconscious, which is making a story and putting labels onto the feeling and the uh, story of uh, how, how could this person have done this. These are all parts of the ego, labels, stories, unconsciously and consciously about it. So the more one, so when you learn to do letting go, feel the feelings, each time you do it, you get better, like meditation. Drop the stories, the thoughts, the abandonment, it's about this person or that person, drop all of that. And what's left? Well, what's left is the feeling, it could be fear or or it might be numbness dissociation you could say those are feelings that you do or you have to be with those until the feelings come out but it doesn't matter um but let go of the, the labels even dissociation is a label or frozen is a label just let go of the words the languaging around it and just be with whatever is um so that's an art and the more you practice it the more it just happens that you drop all stories and you're, you're with whatever's left like fear even fear is a label you drop that as well and just you're with the energy you're with the vibration forget the labeling the stories the this and that about it okay so that's the first thing and don't worry if you can't do it perfectly just keep doing it and you get better over time so <clears throat> you know, to feel rejected um let's say i feel um rejected because someone didn't behave or give me what i wanted um uh i was trying to be love I, I was trying to be what i thought would be loving to another person and they responded in a way which then upset me so that is well what is upset well it's the ego that's upset you see the ego's love love is never Love is actually can never be upset by anything anyone does or says or behaves or, or does ever. 
So love in its pure form is unconditional, meaning the love, it's not even, there, there is no such thing really in true high truth as I love you, because one is just, one loves everything that happens unconditionally. So um, whether a person is there or not, love radiates out and loves the room. Whether a person says something horrible or nice, love still radiates out unconditionally to everything equally, no matter what happens, even in an empty room, love radiates out into the room or the, or the flowers or whatever it is. Uh, if the flowers don't seem to be responding, the people don't respond. It's got it's got nothing to do. So the thing that makes it seem like it's conditional are, are the ego's programs and beliefs. Like if I'm if I'm loving and, and I'm present for you, then I want you to be loving and present back. To, that's not that's not uh, that's not love. That's the ego programs of wanting a certain response or outcome in return, and then trying to block the the love, i.e. It wants to make it conditional so that the, the heart isn't conditional to anything. Even if it rains, if it seems like there's a block because it's raining, that's not, uh, uh, one hasn't reached the level of unconditional love. It's like, okay, it was sunny yesterday and there seemed to be unconditional love, but it's raining today. So you could say it's the love of God's world as it is, exactly as it is, without any story or editing and nothing in the world has the power to diminish the, the love that radiates through. Anyway, so that's just something on, is there something in the world that can happen that can stop love? Well, the only thing that can stop love is the ego programs and its attitudes. Otherwise, uh, once one has cleared away all the ego, then only love remains. And the you know, even if the, the world's going to be, um, you can see the missile in the sky just about to <laughs> obliterate the world, you know, it's like, does it, what would stop the love towards the missile coming down? You know, it's coming down from wherever. You know, there was some kind of spaceship over there, and now there seems to be this big thing on fire coming towards us. Okay, I mean, what would stop the love as you, as one witnessed and observed that coming down? Well, it could only be the ego saying, well, I don't like that. I don't like spaceship looking things flying over, dropping things. <laughs> but, um, but, or if there was suddenly fear, and I wish this wasn't happening, that's not love. That is the um, ego's, <clears throat> the ego's perceptions, of belief systems around that. And when the ego arises in front of the love, which is actually un unconditional in everyone's heart, shall we say, but actually in truth, there is no me and you, there is only love. And the, the, there was no separation, but that's going to cause miracles. And only love is in truth. So everything else was actually uh, one's ego and the collective egos of, of society, but anyway, we will cut that out. So nothing can stop love and, and the experience of love except the ego. So, and the ego doesn't really care what, what's happening. It, it's love radiates. It shines on everything equally, whatever is happening and doesn't diminish. Okay, feeling the feelings. So let's say, you know, but I, I have an ego. Like, let's say I was expecting something from someone. Uh, let's say it's actually my birthday in a few days. I won't say it on video, but uh, Let's say, um, definitely as a child, my father used to, my mum and mum used to try and buy me really expensive presents and force my dad to pay the same amount of money she was spending on me. So I'd get things like, um, you know, oh, mum, 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 I want I want the best TV. And then she, and, and I want I want a video. And then my mum would go, I'm spending all these, this money on a TV. You spend up all this, at least this much money on a thing. So my dad's, <clears throat> so my dad would be forced to, so I got all these extravagant presents. And nowadays, uh, as I became spirit <laughs> spiritual, it's like, you know, whatever he offers me, I'll accept it. Whatever he offers me, and you go, come on, you're, you're a grown man, you can't be expecting anything from your dad. So practice your spirituality. So every year he puts in an envelope 50 pounds on my birthday and leaves it outside my door, God bless him. But recently his, his memory has been forgetful, so he forgets. And I don't even mention it to him, you know, I don't mention it to him. That's fine. And that's my practice of spirituality with him. It's like, whether you give me something or not, it's more than enough. I don't need any more. Whether you forget or not, that's fine. And I practice unconditional love with him. I love you. I mean, am I perfect with that? No, I still have an ego. Uh, but um, but the birthday presence has been, what, it's what I call transcended. I will not, whether you give me anything or don't give me a remember or not, it, it's not going to block my love in that area. There are other things I have to work on. So, 
And the thing with getting to unconditional love or unconditional presence or unconditional acceptance, I mean, you could, whatever you want to call it, of anything that happens, whatever it is in life, is that you find, uh, I, don't st I don't claim I'm in a state of pure unconditional love all the time. That's not what I'm saying in this video. But when I, I do feel I'm connected to the unconditional love, which for me is in the heart, it doesn't come from a person, place or situation. I do feel a lot happier. And it's like there is a source of love that's irrespective of what's happening in the world. But then something in the world happens. And if my ego gets hooked in, I have to let, if I do the field of feelings, my ego gets hooked in, something in the world happened that my ego didn't like. And now it's the, the love has stopped suddenly because this incident's happened. And my ego goes, I didn't like, I don't like that incident. So I, I, I would then go, if it's significant, I'd go into my room, uh, shut the door, um, close my eyes, and we go, no, that's a story. Let go of him, me, whatever. Let go of the thoughts. Let go of the labels. Anger is a label. Rejection is a label. Uh, outrage is a label. Let go of all the thoughts and thinking. So, and just be with what's left. Don't go into story. Don't go into head. Just be with what's left. And then there seems to be an amorphous energy or vibration here. And I'm stopping the head going into any kind of label or story. Uh, that, as you do it, day after day, week after week, month after month. You don't even have to try and do it. It automatically, you sort of sit in your chair and kind of your consciousness knows what you're about to do. And it drops all stories and thoughts and just an energy is experienced and then it starts to dissipate. And then after a period of time, it evaporates away. And then one knows consciously or intuitively that it's done. And actually once the energy has disappeared, suddenly the thing that seemed to have been a problem is no longer an issue. In fact, it's, it, if it's done properly, it's forgotten already. It was it was a it was a, an irrelevant irrelevant thing. 